Hello there, I'm your host Dan Rojas, and this is the Fresnel Lens Solar Tracking Foundry in action on a bright sunny day in Florida. At the heart of the solar tracker are five photo cells that are easily adjustable and keep our lens on target most of the day. While four photo cells are all that is required, the fifth cell detects cloud cover and prevents the motor drives from running wild guessing where the sun is. When clouds are present, the unit goes to sleep. When the sun returns, the tracker springs into action and adjusts the focal pattern directly on the target. Because the lens is top heavy, counterweights from a standard weightlifting set keeps our configuration stable even on windy days. The two drill motors are controlled by the Heliotrack circuit board which is powered by a rechargeable drill battery that can be continually replenished with a small solar panel. This hydraulic motorcycle scissor jack provides easy adjustments to obtain the optimal focal point. Once set, the system automatically adjusts the lens to the optimal target exposure, blasting this ordinary river rock with extreme concentrated sunlight exceeding a new personal record of 3800 degrees Fahrenheit. While obsidian alone is beautiful, layering soda glass from scrap beer bottles offers an additional level of dimension. When working with high temperatures that can cause disastrous burns, I am always careful to keep one hand away from the project as it is easy to forget how much power the lens can concentrate. This steel electrical wire can be added to the obsidian artwork providing detailed levels of metal streaking. Using a standard wood screw to mix our materials allows the screw to also partially melt adding more metal and more detail. If this screw remained directly in the path of the optimal focal point, it would totally melt in a matter of seconds. The molten obsidian can be pulled from the mixture and reapplied almost instantly. Long obsidian strands can be pulled and fused to the screw, creating possibly the first ever backyard rock screw hybrid. Layering more soda glass into the mix allows for enhanced three-dimensional effects encasing the melted metals deep in the layers. Soda glass can also be pulled to lengths exceeding 50 feet. While this strand is shorter, the thinner glass is quite flexible and blows comfortably in the wind with a light breeze. Once completed, the rock is lowered by the jack, creating a larger focal point with lower temperatures, allowing the design to cool slowly in a process called annealing. When the concentrated sunlight is removed, the molten mass is easily visible. After several minutes of slowly cooling, this piece of average everyday river rock has been transformed into a glossy work of art containing many layers of different materials that normally do not fuse well together. This durable solid structure is obsidian, soda glass, and two types of metal. By exposing regular sand from the ground for 20 seconds, a molten mass is created. After another 20 seconds of exposure, our sand is now a solid structure that can be held firmly with a pair of pliers. Since I get a lot of emails regarding the forging process, it's time for me to give it a try with a 3 16 inch diameter steel rod. In a few seconds, the rod is easily bent into shape. Focusing the light on just the end allows for instant molten metal that is easily hammered into a flat shape. This process works excellent, especially when using a heavy steel plate to act as our base. Quenching the hot steel in a bath of water hardens the steel as the molecules are aligned, but it also makes it brittle. By reheating and slowly cooling, regular steel is transformed into a much harder structure. This next part is just for fun. Time for some copper melting. Many people have used Fresnel lenses to melt pennies. While I do not recommend it for legal reasons, most pennies, including the demos, are post-1982 zinc pennies with a micro-thin layer of copper. Zinc has a very low melting temperature of less than 800 degrees Fahrenheit, Copper's melting temperature is around 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. Thick copper strands like the one I am using rapidly dissipate heat along the length, requiring temperatures exceeding 2500 degrees Fahrenheit to melt. When exposed to our solar foundry, the thick copper is melted in half in just a few seconds. In less than a minute, almost the entire strand is in a molten pool of pure copper. Stainless steel tubing is shiny and has a very high tolerance to heat. This quarter inch tubing is completely cut in half in less than 15 seconds. 
As each area of the remnants are exposed, the concentrated sunlight devours the tubing like butter, adding to our molten mass. Keep in mind, this is without the use of a crucible in open air. A lightly colored sturdy steel rail usually resists most concentrated sunlight, but it is no match for this insane heat this system delivers. This one inch wide rail is easily cut in half with only redirected sunlight. Since our results were so promising, it's time to try to melt a steel rod at the center. Melting the tip is easy because the heat can only dissipate in one direction. Bending the center is not truly melting the steel. With the solar tracker locked on target, this 3 16th inch rod becomes a bubbling orange fountain of molten steel. When the exposure is moved off target, the rod glows a brilliant orange, as does the collection area below consisting of copper, stainless steel, and regular steel. One final trick anyone can do with scrap broken bottles is make glass drops. By heating a thick steel block and placing the glass at the focal point, the glass performs a mild version of the Leidenfrost effect. The glass, regardless of the original shape, forms a nice, smooth, spherical structure with a flat bottom. Because the steel block is extremely hot, it acts as an annealing base, preventing the formation from shattering. Throughout the day, I was able to fuse two colors of glass together, make a glazed glass structure out of regular sand, blast through steel railing, destroy stainless steel tubing, forge and melt a thick steel rod, and try my hand at a small glass sculpture of a blue seal. I'll be demonstrating an easy DIY cost-effective build with this design and also alternatives to the real sun tracker using cycle timers and manual controls for all levels of precision and budgets. Also by popular request, I will illustrate how this unit could be used for heating, refrigeration and have some short clips of Fresnel lens versus different objects for a different approach to recycling. I'm your host Dan Rojas, thank you for watching and enjoy our videos. Mm-hmm.